I'm Warren, Minister at Greenford Baptist, sir, and you know that I am. I uh, want to talk to you about insurance, if that's okay. Uh, I, I, I don't want to sell you any per se, but I want to talk to you about insurance. But I suppose, first and foremost, you're probably going, you what, I want to turn this off. Insurance, I'm not interested. Bear with me just a second. Um, think about car insurance. Ever had car insurance? Uh, you may not have done, maybe you had house insurance, you may not have done that, or you've taken out some other kind of insurance policy. But I want to talk about car insurance because I am a bit of a petrol head. I love cars. I enjoy talking about cars. It resonates in my head better. Car insurance, normally fairly good, especially if you've got the full house insurance, the full party, the, the complete enough to uh, comprehensive insurance with business use. Really useful. Why is comprehensive insurance useful? Well, should you in the unfortunate and, in my case, hopefully very unlikely event, have a car accident, notice I use the phrase hopefully, um, you know, if I do have a car accident and damage my car, and that's hopefully all that one would ever damage is one's car, uh, and hopefully nobody else's car, but if you damage their car, okay, uh, but hopefully never damage an actual person, genuinely do not ever want to damage an actual person, then I do know if my car does get damaged, that with a fully comprehensive insurance, my insurance company will arrange eventually at some point to get my car fixed at no extra cost to me other than maybe some excess that I might have agreed to in the first place. And with some car insurance policies, you can also say I'm not paying any excess at all and they will just cover the entire cost for you at any moment. They'll even supply you, should you need one, a courtesy car for you to drive around in whilst your car is in for repair. Yeah, I suppose I better read from the Bible really, better than I. Turn with me if you can to Ephesians uh, chapter 1, uh, verses uh, 12 to 14. God's purpose was that we Jews, who were the first to trust in Christ, would bring praise and glory to God. And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit whom he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. That was from the New Living Translation. I'm also going to give you uh, the one from the Passion Translation. Same, same verse, verses, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verses 12 to 14. God's purpose was that we Jews, who were the first to hope for the uh, first to long for the messianic hope will be the first to believe in the anointed one and bring great praise and glory to God. And because of him, when you, who were not Jews, heard the revelation of truth, you believed in the wonderful news of salvation. And now we have been stamped with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. He is given to us like an engagement ring is given to a bride at the first instalment of what's coming. He is our hope promise of a future inheritance, which seals us until we have all the redemption's promises and experience of complete freedom, all for the supreme glory and honour of God. The Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit, should I say, as he is the third person of the Trinity. Here, for those of us that have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour, he is given to us as, as it says, either as a guarantee, as like a, a guarantee or like an engagement ring, or, or in some versions like a, a deposit as a guarantee, a down payment of sort of the sense of here is the first instalment as a promise to your future life with God as an absolute guarantee that you will be spending all of eternity surrounded and saturated with God's love. Now, the problem 
problem is in modern day language, I have to say, I, I looked at certain versions of these. An engagement ring, great, but in, let's be honest, in our modern day 21st century, engagements are easily, just as easily broken. A deposit. Well, some deposits are refundable. So we can give back the deposit if we really wanted to. Inheritance. Wills can be changed. But I suppose insurance. We're back to insurance. If you pay your premiums, you're insured for the entire time that that covers your year that you've paid your premiums on. Or if you pay on a monthly basis, then you're sort of insured for that month until you've paid your next month. But most people tend to be insured for a whole year on a car and uh, somehow with the policies etc they accept that maybe some premium monthly premiums may not be paid but if you discuss it with them they're, they're quite happy to keep you insured for the year and you just know for that entire year that you're driving around on your car or riding your motorbike or your scooter or whatever it is that you 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 may or may not ride around in that you're insured and you can rest in the sh insur assurance that you're insured and you're being legal and within UK law in your car. And should you in the unlikely and hopefully never event have an accident, that your car will be fixed. And then you can carry on with your journey. But I suppose the, the analogy falls down in the fact that eventually your insurance, you have to pay your premiums a year later again. And if you don't have the money to pay your year's premiums, then you can't drive your car or ride your motorbike or your scooter. But I realised probably for the first time that the Holy Spirit, when it's deposited within you, when he's within you as a, as a guarantee, it's almost like a car insurance. Here is my certificate of car insurance. Should anybody ever pull me over and say, is your car insured? I can go, and here is my insurance certificate to prove that my car is insured. And it's like the deposit of the Holy Spirit. When he comes along, he's like my insurance certificate that says, well, I'm paid up with God. I am insured by the creator and sustainer of the universe. Should today I have a crash in my spiritual walk with God, it's okay. Because I can then fall back on the reliance of the insurance that I have of the Holy Spirit and he will fix me and we can carry on with my walk with him. There are times that God might come along and say, do you know something for now? You need a courtesy car. For now, you need to be carried by me. I need to help you out whilst you're being fixed elsewhere. Yeah, I'm not saying we're omnipresent, but bear with the analogy here slightly. And the difference is, I suppose, with the deposit of the Holy Spirit compared to a car insurance is, is that I don't have to pay my monthly premiums or my yearly premiums every year because it's all been paid up in full on the uh, Holy Spirit insurance paper there is no expiry date it says started and in my case it will be something like when i accepted jesus christ as my lord and savior something like november uh, 1992 i can't remember the exact date i'm afraid i can remember the date of my baptism but not the exact date of when i gave my life to jesus but i know it was about november 1992 it says 1992 expiry date eternity And I suppose for us, it's exactly the same thing. For those who have given their lives to Jesus, we have been deposited with the Holy Spirit as our guarantee, as our insurance that will never expire, that you are now part of the insurance company of God and he can guarantee you that when it needs to pay out, it will pay out in full and then some. And this is an insurance policy that you don't have to argue over. Wait for the 
risk assessor to come out for. This is, or you don't get the mechanic going wrong going, oh, wow. And also, this is an insurance policy that what you won't have is them going, well, unfortunately, the repairs far, far exceed the value of the vehicle. So therefore, then, I'm sorry, we're just going to have to write it off. Now, God doesn't do that. He says, I don't care. Actually, the, uh, the value that you are is my son. And I didn't write him off. I made him rise again from the dead and brought him into heaven. So you are never, ever going to exceed the repair costs. I will forever, forever pay out for you all the time. All I ask, says the Lord, is on the journey on a daily basis, is that you do exactly what it says at the end of verse 14, is that I did this so that you would praise and glorify my son Jesus. So what about you? I don't know if you've ever thought about that when you receive Christ as your Lord and Saviour, that you receive the Holy Spirit, not just as some guarantee, and the guarantee, by the way, is endless as well, but also as an insurance policy. Not one means that you can drive around like a nutter doing whatever you please, but more of an insurance policy that says... You want to claim on this? You can claim on this all of the time. And the premiums never change because it was all paid up for in Jesus Christ. Enjoy your journey today. God bless to you.